Good evening, good evening, good evening, everybody. Good evening, Engineer Pascal. I welcome to this evening discussion. Angel David, good evening. God bless you for joining us. God bless you for joining us. Please invite your friends, invite your, your friends. Please just share this program on your wall so that people can join us right now. Uh, we have very, very important discussion this evening. Discussion regarding our tradition, our culture, our history. You are all welcome. Tony King, Sassenogwan, good evening, my brother. You are welcome. Good evening. You are welcome. Please stay tuned. We are starting now very, very briefly. Okay, Clement, now I can see you now. You are watching. Thank you, my brother. Please share it on your wall so that other people can know that we have started because what we want to discuss tonight is very, very important. It's very, very important to every son, Edo sons and daughter. Omoye Akpata, good evening. Thank you for joining us. Let's go. Thank you very much for joining us again, Osunde Efe. Thank you for joining us, Abota. Open Red, good evening, my brother. Good evening, good evening, good evening for joining us, my brother. You are welcome to this evening discussion. Please stay tuned. And uh, I promise you we are all going to have a very nice time tonight. We are going to have a very nice discussion. Blair Oji, good evening, sir. Unique Judith, good evening. Open Red, happy Friday to you. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much. Um, okay, good evening, good evening. Obama Stella, thank you for joining us. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. Please, I beg you, just... Yeah, I'm with you too. Thanks for being with me, Alex Good. Is it good or God? You, you, you've got God, bro. <laughs> you've got God. So, thank you. Glad to see you. Okay, well, I don't ask you that one, Opo Red. That one are your choice. <laughs> that one are your choice, so what do you be now your choice? Hey. Good evening, Lara Edos. Stephanie Raw, thank you, thank you, thank you. Good evening. I'll be... As I look good, I say make I go traditional this evening. Let me go traditional. Since we are going to discuss something regarding our tradition, let me go traditional. Let me see, I want to discuss history of Bini. I go wear suits. You get as a Bina. I need to complement what I want to talk about. That be? Uh-huh. One bosa for me for there. Thank you very much. Um, now, uh, uh, Alex, okay, Alex Good, okay, uh, Alex Good, okay, that is what you meant by Alex Good, okay, Alex Good, 
Thank you very much. Everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Fine. Okay. Um, tonight, I want us to discuss the story, the history behind the Oba Ewari the Great. The history, good night, Ben. Good night, Ben. Osa, honey, demo, dear. Good night, Ben. Thank you. Good evening to you. Waya bota, waya bota, waya wese o. So this evening we want to discuss about the Oba Eware the Great, the story behind him. What made him great? How did he become great? How did he become Oba Eware the Great? And we also know that Joy Manoa. Good evening. Thank you. We also know that our present king took after this great king. No, so when we're talking, when I we're talking about Oba Eware the Great, we are, I'm talking about the Oba Eware the First. The Oba of Benin of today, Uku Akpolokpolo, is the Oba Eware the Second. But today we are going to talk about Oba Eware the First, popularly known as Oba Eware the Great. Then we will also talk about the mystery surrounding Emotan. The Emotan statue that is at Oba Market, Benin City, uh, opposite Oba Market, by, just by the Ring Road, we have a motor statue there. How, who is Emotan? How did the statue get there? What does it, how does it connect Oba Elwari? What is the relationship between Oba Elwari the Great and Emotan? So this is another thing we want to discuss. And the third thing that is related to Oba Elwari the Great is the name Edo. How did we become known as Edo? Before the coming of Oba Elwari the Great, the kingdom was called Ubini. The kingdom was called Ubini. How come it became Edo that we are known for today? Uh, that is what we want to discuss tonight. We also know that way before the, uh, Benin or Edo was called Ubini, it was also called Igodo Migodo. It was called Igodo Migodo. It was also once called Adesagbon. It was once called Adesagbon, which means the center of the earth. Edo Kingdom was known as the center of the earth, Adesagbon. Then Igodo, we were so known, known as also as uh, Igodo, Migodo. Then later we became known as Ubini. All these stories, maybe we will discuss them on, on another day, on a later date. But today, our focus today is on Oba Eware the first, who is Oba uh, Eware the Great. Okay, so thank you, Angel, for knowing this story. So we. We are going to discuss, I know a lot of you know the story, some may not know, for the benefit of those who, not, who don't know, we will discuss. Now, I want you to understand this thing. This, what I'm going to tell you tonight, is not just a story. I'm not talking about a story, I'm talking about his story. His story. I'm talking about authentic history that is verified and proven. Authentic history that is verified and proven, and which you can even use as a thesis in your university course. If, I mean, if you want to write your, your post, postgraduate uh, thesis, even your PhD thesis, what I'm going to tell you right now, you can write it as a thesis. You can write it as a thesis. Vicky Oman, a wow, long time. Thank you for joining us. Uh, so that that is that you can write it as a as a thesis. So it is a very very important discussion. Okay, now uh, to start, I want you to understand that the father of Oba Eware the Great was a great king known as Oba Ohen. Oba Ohen is the father of Oba Eware the Great. And this Oba Ohen had, before, during his reign, the system of primogenitor of rulership today that we have in Edo Kingdom is different from what obtained that time. What I mean by primogenitor is uh, when the eldest son of a king takes over the throne 
at the demise of the king. When the king goes home to meet the ancestors, the eldest son of the king takes the throne. Just like what just happened last year in the, in the kingdom where our current Oba took the throne of his forefathers. So that one is called primogenitor. But before Oba Eware, it wasn't so. It wasn't so because Oba Ohen had four sons. Oba Ohen had four sons. And all the four sons ruled in Benin Kingdom. All the four sons of Oba Ohen ruled in Benin Kingdom. Because Oba, uh, how did it happen? Oba Ohen had problem with the kingdom. Because when Oba Ohen had problem with the ERSA, of Benin, the ears, his own ears, you know that the ears is the second in command of the kingdom. After the Oba, the ears is like is the prime minister, is the prime minister, is the next in command to the Oba. So Oba Ohen had issue with the ears then, and he killed the ears. Oba Ohen killed the Iyase. And when Oba Ohen killed the Iyase, the people of Bini became very, very angry. They became, they became very angry. Because they became angry, they became rebellious. They became rebellious. They refused to obey him again because they were angry that he killed the Iyase. So because of those rebellion, there was a revolt, and that revolt led to the death of Oba Ohen, who is the father of uh, Oba Elware. So you, if you, now I want you to uh, understand this, uh, this, um, this system of kingship. This system of kingship, it, where, uh, uh, the, 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 if you look at it now, Oba, Oba Ohen was a king. His four sons were each one equally kings. It is similar to what happened in the British Empire under the Tudor kings. Under the king, uh, the Tudor kings, uh, uh, the, Tudor, uh, the, Tudor, the head of the, the the beginning of the Tudor kings started with King Henry VIII. If you know the story of the British Empire, the King Henry VIII had became he became a king, and when he died, his son King Edward, I think King Edward became the next king after he died. Edward was a very young boy and he was very sick and he died too. When Edward died, the next, uh, because uh, the next uh, king was, was a woman because King Henry VIII had only one son, two daughters. So he had one son, Edward. He had uh, one daughter called Mary, born by Anne de Boleyn. Uh, the, 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 from the princess of uh, of Spain, then he had no, not from Anne de Boleyn, from Catherine. The from the uh, the Catherine was the sister, uh, the mother uh, from the daughter of the uh, was the princess from Spain. Uh, Catherine had a daughter called Mary for King uh, Henry the Eighth. Then Anne de Boleyn was another another king, another woman that had another daughter for uh, Henry the Eighth. And that daughter was called Elizabeth. So the Tudor kings had the King Henry VIII ruled. Uh, King Edward, the son, died, uh, ruled and died. Uh, Mary, Mary, who later be, uh, became known as Bloody Mary, also ruled. Then later on, Elizabeth ruled. Four Tudor kings. But in the case of Benin, five kings from the same, one king, the father, and four other children ruled in Benin kingdom. So this system, uh, and the fantastic thing about this story is that Oba S. Elba Ohen and, Oba, and the children ruled 200 years even before uh, King Henry VIII ruled in England. 200 years before King Henry VIII ruled in England because uh, 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 King Ohen, I mean, uh, the King Ohen uh, ruled in 12, from 1295. The, uh, and, his, and his children and, and um, uh, uh, Oba, Oba, Oba Elware ruled until about 1372. So as at 1372, 
Even the Tudor king, Henry VIII, has not even started ruling. They, 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 they started ruling, uh, Henry VIII became king in the year 1500. Oh, because uh, actually he became king in the year 1485, exactly almost 200 years before. So the kingdom of Benin has been very great, even before what those popular kings in England. Before those popular kings in England, we 200 years we had a very great king in Benin king uh, in in, uh, in Benin kingdom, known as Oba Eware the Great. So now, like I was trying to, to, to make you understand, when, Oba, when the people of Benin revolted against King Ohen, Oba Ohen, and that revolt led to his death. And when Oba Ohen died, please let me beg you, but before we continue, because I want people to hear, a lot of people to hear this, take one minute off, go to your war. Share your share this video. Just share it. Share it. Let show it to your wall. Invite your friends. Let people come and listen to this thing because it's very very important to our story. Share it. So, so, uh, so what I'm trying to tell you now, you, you see, historians historians forsook our people and they concentrated on England. When they tell you the picture and the story of King Henry VIII, if you see movies of King Henry VIII, of uh, King Edward, uh, uh, and uh, Mary, uh, Mary, which is uh, and, um, Bloody Mary, if, if, if anywhere you hear Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary is the daughter of King Henry VIII. The Elizabeth was the, the first Elizabeth, Queen Elizabeth I, because the one that is ruling in England today is Queen Elizabeth II. So the Queen Elizabeth I was also the daughter of Henry VIII. So all these king, all these uh, stories they tell us in history, in movies, and all that, all this came 200 years after the great kingdom of Benin had a great king. Is that one not marvelous? Is that one not marvelous? But here we are sitting, expecting the historians or the European historians to come and write our story for us. No, they will not write your story. We will, we will begin to write our story. We will begin to tell our story. And through any media that we have. Thank you, Uni, for sharing. Thank you. Just, just thank you. God bless you for sharing. Just share. Let people come and listen to this. Because it's very, very important. It's very, very important. Because if you know where you are coming from, you will know where you are going. If you don't know where you are coming from, you won't know where you are going. If you don't know how great you were as a people, you should not, from this story, you know that you are children of great kings, great and mighty kings that rule this kingdom. Even when the Europe, European kingdom were still in darkness, when they were still, we, 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 we were very great and we are still great. So, so that, that is that. Now, coming back home now to the story, the king, Ohen, Killed the ESA of the time, and the people of Benin revolted against the king, and he died. When he died, the 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 first son, the first son of King of King Gohen began to rule in Benin. His name was Oba Egbeka. Oba Egbeka, he became the king. And uh, it, it, now, we don't know what led to his death. He didn't rule for too long, and he died. The next in line was Oba Orobiu. Orobiu was the brother of Egbeka. Orobiu was the second son of King Oba Ohen. Uh, Egbek, I mean, Egbeka was the first son. Orobiu was the second son. Then uh, the, third, the third son was Ogun. And the fourth child was Uwaifyokun. Ogun was the third one, and uh, Uwaifyokun was the, 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 the last uh, son. And Ogun and Uwaifyokun were from the same mother. Ogun and Uwaifyokun was from the same mother. And when Oba uh, Egbeka died, Oba Orobiru became king. Before you know it, Oba Orobiru also died. And there was a big problem in the kingdom because of the 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 
the way of uh, Ogun, Prince Ogun, who was the next in line, because the two sons of the former king has died now, so Ogun is supposed to be the next in line. So the chiefs, the Edionists, uh, they did not want Ogun to become king because of the way he, he, he would deal with them. He was very forceful. He was a no-nonsense person. So they begin to plot to kill him. And uh, in the process of trying to kill him, when he got news that they want to kill him, he now ran away with his younger brother, who was Uwaifyokun. He now ran away into the forest. That is how he saved his life. So he ran away into the forest. That is how he, he, he saved his life. But he never knew, he never knew that... Um, the 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 Dionysian now, which is the, the when we talk about Dionysian, then it was just five kings. I think today they are about a Dionysian or something like that. I mean five five uh, five uh, chiefs, the kingmakers. They are called the kingmakers. Dionysian are the chief makers, the kingmakers. Today I think they are seven, but then they were five. So Dionysian, they wanted to kill Ogun. And Ogun ran away with his brother, uh, Uwaifyokun. And they never knew because that Uwaifyokun was not that intelligent. He was not, he was not a smart person. So Ogun felt that if he will run, run and leave him, they will kill him. He never knew that they, they favored Uwaifyokun against him. They were looking for a king that, they, they, that can rule, that they can subdue, that they can intimidate. So, but uh, he never knew that, but he ran away with his brother and they went into the forest. So, that is, that is how they, they ran away. Then they spent some years wandering in the forest. They spent some years wandering in the forest. After a while, after a while, Owaifyokun now, I mean, uh, Prince Ogun now sent his younger brother. Are you listening to me? Hope you guys are paying attention. So, the, the Uwaifu, uh, Prince Ogun now sent his younger brother, who is uh, Uwaifu Kuna, to go to Ubini, to go and spy if everything has calmed down. If, to go and spy if everything has calmed down. And uh, Uwaifu Kun obeyed him, and he came to Bini Kingdom. And when he got to Ubini, he discovered that everything has calmed down and he went to uh, uh, and he went to the one of the king make, makers. And the king makers, when they discovered that he, he, uh, he, has, he has come in, then they now asked him. Because he, he, uh, actually when Waifyokun arrived at Ubini, he went straight to Chi Iyama's house. At Ihogbe. When he got there, he now they, they now uh, asked him about the whereabouts of his brother. He now told them that his brother he has no they missed themselves in the bush. They has not seen his brother for a, quite a long time. He, he he didn't know where the brother was. So then they now took Uwaifyokun and they now brought him before. I mean, uh, uh, Ihama now brought Uwaifyokun and brought him before the. He brought him before the the Edionisen, before the Edionisen, because as at this time, legion has it that because of the injustice meted out to Prince Ogun, there was a lot of calamity in the land. There was chaos in the land. There was no king for a, for a period of three years. There had been no king. The 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 two king's children fled into exile. And there was a lot of calamity, according to traditional belief. They believed that the, the, the ancestors were angry, and that was why there were a lot of deaths in the land. People were dying, and so forth, and so, and so on and so forth. But when Wafukun eventually showed up, they were happy. And they now said, Wafukun, which is their choice, choice candidate anyway, they now made Wafukun king. And Waifyokun is the younger brother of Prince Ogun. According to the law of succession, he is not supposed to be the next in line. The next in line is Prince Ogun. So they made Waifyokun uh, uh, king, and, uh, and 
the brother was afraid. The brother was, I mean, the brother was afraid. That is Prince Ogun was afraid. He, was, he, was, he didn't know what has befed his younger brother. He felt that he has gone to the city and they, 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 they may have captured him and killed him. So he was very feeling guilty for sending his younger brother on such a, a spy mission. So that was what happened. After some while, he now became, he now became very cautious himself. He decided to come and uh, find out what really happened and he now sneak into the kingdom in the night no but as he was coming into the kingdom then the, uh, he now heard that his brother has been made king that the brother actually did not die the brother was not killed that is wife yokun was not killed Iwafioku did not die, which means he was just panicky for not being afraid for his brother for nothing. He never knew that the brother has betrayed him. He never knew that his brother has betrayed him. But when he came to this vicinity, he found out that the brother has betrayed him and he has accepted to be crown king and he is now ruling as king. And when the brother became king, because he knew that he, for him to, to for his uh, reign to last, he has to look for a way to eliminate Ogun. So he was now he now sent the royal warriors to go and find his brother and kill his brother. That Uwafioku now wanted to kill his elder brother, and the bro brother was the one who was protecting him all this while. So that is how that story went. Then when Prince Ogun uh, uh, got, uh, got news about the, the, the kingship of, of uh, Uwafiokun, he became very, very angry. He became very angry. And he, he, went, he went to, to uh, Unhuidun. There's a place called Unhuidun around Ikboba Hill area of today. But then it was called Unhuidun. And in Unhuidun, there was, he has a... A, a, an uncle in Uindu who who was a priest, and uh, and this uncle was name was Azua. He has an uncle called Azua who was a priest in Uindu, and uh, and uh, Azua made a divination. Uh, and, and Azua made this divination and told Prince Ogun that he would he would get his throne back. Then that is he made a prophetic declaration that. You will get your throne back. No matter what, it may take time, but you are going to get your throne back. But Ogun did not believe because the, his brother, Owaifi Ogun, had already sent soldiers to go and look for him, to kill him. So he's now running from place to place, from bush to blue, from village to village, from hamlet to hamlet, uh, trying to save his life. So, but when uh, Azua told him that he was going to to become a, a king in the land, he now asked for Azua for a sign. He said, if you really say I'm going to become a king, what sign are you going to give me for you to believe? Then Azua now uh, told Prince Ogun that, he, I mean, he, uh, he gave him uh, three signs. He said, because he asked for one sign, but uh, Azua gave him three signs. He said he will, he will meet a pregnant woman, he will meet a hunter, and he meet an old woman, all of them who will say positive things concerning him in the course in the, in the in the in the forest. So, so when he, he, he told him this thing, then he left. So he now promised Azua that if his prophecy came true, he was going to reward Azua. So that was how he left Unwindu uh, and he went through um, area that is known today as Ikbe. Because if, if you go from Ikbobahi side of today, if you go towards the uh, 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 upper Sakmaba area of today, that is what I'm trying to let you understand that. But in back then it was just a thick forest. So he went through that area and came out in the area of Ikbe. And from Ikbe he found his way to a Kai village. Well, most of us know where Ekai is now. Ekai of today is, uh, is in a Sapler Road area. So that is where, when he, when he landed at Ekai, 
he, he now stayed there for a while and uh, he formed a settlement. And the settlement that he formed that time, today, those people are called Ewabogun. Uh, Ewabogun. Or rather, but, but people call it Ewabogun. If you, if, you, if you go to Ekai today, after Ekai, by the other side, there is a place called Ewabogun. But actually, it was called Ewabogun. That is how those, he, he found that settlement. And in the meantime, the troops that were sent by Wafiokun were still searching for him. They went into the forest. They were looking for him because his brother know how fierce his, uh, uh, Prince Ogun is. He know how fierce Prince Ogun is. He knows how, uh, how great he is. He knows what he can do. He know for him, the only way for him to survive the throne is for him to kill Prince Ogun. So he told them they should capture him, kill him, and bring his head. So now the, 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 the Prince Ogun was now running for his life. And the, the, people, the troops would now come. When the troops came to Evabogun area, he, now, he himself, he now went into the bush. He healed himself. Uh, there was a time he was in the bush. And the, the, the troop came, almost came to area where he was. That he hid himself uh, under a broad leaf. The broad leaf, I'm still going to tell you, you also know the meaning of a, a bear wear today. Because that broad leaf, that if you know a bear wear, uh, that the Bini call a bear wear, wear which they always use during the Nigue festival to do the air wear day. Wear. So this air wear leaf, there was an area, there were a lot of them. He hid himself under the air wear leaf. So the troops passed by. They could not, they did not discover him and that was how he escaped. He was saved by that air wear leaf. So later on you will discover what he did with the Everywhere leaves. So that is uh, uh, what happened at Ewabogun, Ekai, and uh, and uh, as he hid himself uh, and uh, and the everywhere leaves and all that. So later on, he met a pregnant woman on, in the bush. I, I met a pregnant woman on the bush, and the pregnant woman was approaching him. He was going to her farm, not knowing some someone was there. She then she, you know, when you you hit, when you stomp, struck your your toe in, in, in the Benin culture, in Benin culture, when you struck your toe against a stump, um, a stump of wood, they, they you you will feel there was like uh, it's a sign to them to the to the traditional Benin person is a sign. Una una ikmiya we we no gi una ya. He took or or anything. You feel that there is, it gives you a sign that there's something happened. So the woman, it happened to this pregnant woman. And when she struck her toe against a stump and screamed in lamentation, she said, What bad omen is this? He said, She now said, The spirits are angry. Our ancestors are angry. Ogun, the rightful heir to the throne, must be found to ascend the throne before peace can return to the land. She was just talking to herself. She never knew that Prince Ogun was within the vicinity and Prince Ogun was hearing. So the, the, the prophecy of Azua Yatihundun, this was because remember that Azua told him that he will meet a pregnant woman, he will meet uh, an. Uh, and uh, a hunter, and he will meet another old woman who will give him three signs. So, so this was the sign of the the, the pregnant woman. So when when suddenly the, the prince Ogun came up out of the bush path, the woman was surprised. She was startled, though she didn't recognize Prince Ogun. But Ogun introduced himself, and she was happy to repeat herself. And reassured Ogun that, he, that the people of the kingdom loved him. He told that the people of the kingdom loved Prince Ogun. That the, 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 what the Adionisian were doing, the people were not part of it. So because of the, the, the words of this pregnant woman, Prince Ogun's spirit was lifted. 
his spirit was lifted and and he now told the woman that uh, promised the woman that because the woman was going to the farm so and the woman was in, a, in an area called Ugbekun. this thing that this one happened now in an area called Ugbekun in benin in benin city today you know where Ugbekun is now because if you leave remember he was now coming from ikbe he went through uh, a kind of Wabogun area and he now come through through ikbe I mean, uh, Ugbekun, coming towards the city center now. So, at Ugbekun, he met this uh, pregnant woman who was going to the farm. So, the, today, even the area where that woman's farm is, uh, when Ogun became king, he declared that area as a royal, a royal farmland. And, uh, yes, it's at Upper Clement. It's uh, uh, a royal farmland. And uh, it now made that woman not to farm again. And whatever, uh, where the, what the royal uh, farmers were bringing, they were giving that woman some royalty. So if, even to today, to today, if you go to Upper Sakmamba, between Goretti and Welfare, by the right, there is a place called Ogonerie. There is a place called Ogonerie. That Ogonerie is still vacant today. It's an Obas land. Nobody has built anything there before you get to the Ubeku primary school by by the right almost uh, almost opposite to welfare junction so that that land is still there today that land is still there today Ogonerie. so that was what happened at Ubeku. then Ogun now continued and uh, uh, he now but prior to them, there was, a, I think he met the hunter at Umelu. The, the hunter that he was supposed to, he met that one at Umelu. And that one also gave him uh, 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 encouraging words. So that one was the second prophecy. So when he got to Bini, when he got to Bini, he went to the house of one of the chief. Not a Dionysus, now one of the Bini chiefs called Ogiva. This Ogieva was is the one that we've been called Ogieva no Mwekbo. Prince Ogun went to the house of Ogieva no Mwekbo. He went to the Ogieva's house and I told, and, and secretly told and he was hoping that he will, he will find respite there from the troops that were hunting him. Because as he was coming, people see him, they are reporting to the palace. You know, the, the words of the king is law in the, in the, in the, in the kingdom. So the people who sees uh, somebody or, uh, the, uh, or who, is, who is trying to take the throne from the king is assumed to be an Oriomba, the enemy of the king. So because of that, the uh, anywhere they see him, information always trickle down to the palace. The palace always find out that uh, uh, Prince Ogun was here. Prince Ogun was here, but, but before they will get there, he will run away. So when he got to Benin, he went to Chief Ogiva's house. Ogiva no Mwekbo. and he now told Ogiva no Mwekbo so that this, that his life is in danger. The the chief, the Dionysian, and the, his brother, they are hunting his life. Then Ogeva now told him to come and hide. Ogeva now hide him inside an empty well in his compound. Ogeva now covered the mouth of the well so that he, and people will not find out so that what will reassure him. But when Ogeva no Mwekbo left there, now discuss with somebody that he is going to go and look for the royal army to come and capture him. Because Ogeva was afraid of the king. Because you cannot harbor the enemy of the king. If and if the king find out the uh, if the, if the king finds find out, they will uh, it, he will be in trouble. So there, there was a, a, a slave boy in the house of Ogeva. There was a slave boy in the house. And that slave boy overheard the name Ogefa no Mwekbo. Yeah, Ogefa no Mwekbo. Thank you, my sister. So the 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 the, the house boy or I mean the servant 
heard about the master Ogifa saying he was going to uh, uh, call the royal guards. And before he came, the, the, the servant, the slave boy, the slave boy went to the, the place where, uh, where Ogifa hid the, where Ogifa hid Prince Ogun and brought him out of the, the well and caused him to es uh, escape. And the name of that slave boy is called Edo. Edo was his name. The, Ogi, uh, the slave boy, Ogifa slave, his name was Edo. And when the, when the master came with the soldiers, when they found out that Edo has released Prince Ogun to escape, they killed Edo right there on the spot. They killed Edo right there on the spot. So that is how uh, Edo died. And when Prince Ogun ran uh, uh, in the night, Prince Ogun ran to area opposite the market, the the Ekioba, where we have the Oba market today. The the Ekioba, the, the market was there. Um, now I'm talking about twelve hundred to thirteen hundred uh, AD. More than if thirteen hundred till now, how many years ago? About seven. Eight, 800 years ago. So, so, is it 800 now? Yeah, yeah, eight, about 800 years ago. Now, the market, this urban market ha, was there as at that time, has been there. Then opposite the urban market, there was a woman who was, an old woman who was staying there. They built a hot she built a hut there at the opposite the market and the name of this woman was called a motor this the name of this woman was called a motor now let me uh, divert a little bit and, and tell you a little story about a motor a motor was uh, a woman who came from a village if you know where Enya is now, Enya is now Adowawa, uh, Adowawa area where, if you, where the uh, Coca-Cola company is now in uh, in uh, Ipoba Hill side. That is where Enya, Enya is. So he came from Enya village, and uh, this uh, woman, uh, she she was married to. Um, to a man, she was the second wife of a particular man in Benin City. She was a, a wife of a particular man in Benin City. As a young woman, uh, during the, uh, the reign of her uh, Prince Ogun father, she married this man called, uh, the man whose name was uh, Azama, Chief Azama of Ihobe. Uh, that is uh, a motor now. A motor married Azama of Ihobe as a second wife. And but as at that time, her real name was not a motan. Her birth name was called Uwaraye. Uwaraye. That, so that was her birth name. But, but she had two, um, two uh, uh, faults. The, the, one of her faults was that she, the, it, uh, history has it that she didn't know how to cook. And she didn't have, she couldn't bear any children. For the husband, and but she was very, very beautiful. So because of that, the first wife of the man, uh, which is uh, Arale, uh, I mean uh, whether Arab Arabi or something like that, it was called Arabi. So it was the first wife, and she had children, and she cooked for the man. Because of that, this woman was despised, and and. The only thing this woman was very good at, the woman was, this uh, Uwarayena is a very hospitable woman, very, very hospitable. She's very accommodating. Although she didn't have any children of her own, but she always nurses and takes care of the children of the first wife. She was the one taking care of the children of the first wife until they all grow up and leave, left the house. So a time came that the man, the husband died, and the husband, when the husband died, 
and she was now old, she couldn't go to her parents' house. Now she, because that spot opposite the market where the Emota statue is today, that is where she was trading. She was trading, uh, she, she has two items she was trading. One, she was trading uh, this uh, seasoned condiment, uh, Evarie. Evarie is a, uh, Evarie, uh, to you who do not understand Benin, is a, a seasoned condiment made out of a uh, fermented melon. If you, there is a way they break melon, they, they keep it to ferment for some days, and uh, it becomes a condiment for seasoning food, or uh, what we call, generally call magi. So this is what she was doing, and she was also uh, involved in in picking cutting balls and turning it into into wool. This is what she was. Okay, Africa magi. Okay, Zoe says Africa magi. Okay, native magi. All right. So all of a lot of you know uh, what uh, what uh, Evarie is. So with that, this is what she was selling. But because she loves children, when customers come to the market, when customer comes to the market with children and uh, and uh, and some women with wares, they always leave their children, their babies with uwaraye, uh, which is a motor. They always leave their children with her at the other side of the of the market. So she was the one taking care. Of them, so it's in, invariably it's like in the year 1300, a motor started the first nursery and daycare center in the whole of Africa. Is that not wonderful? In the year 1300, a motor started the first daycare and nursery care for in a, or a crich, what you call some, what few call it crich today or kindergarten, whatever, she started it back then in 800 years ago. So, so that was what the woman was doing. And she was, funniest thing, she was doing it free of charge. She was not collecting money from, from anybody. So she was a very, very hospitable person. She was a very, very hospitable person. She was loved by everybody. If she was, she, what she couldn't, though God did it, she didn't have children of her own. It's like the children of all the women in the market were her children. They were all her children. She was very good. So when she became old, the, uh, and the husband, when the husband died and she had no place to go, now she, she now went to erect a hut at that place where she was uh, taking care of children and selling her wares. That is where she erected a hut and that became her house. That became her house. So, so that is, um, but the only thing, like the only thing I, I have missed out, and let me just put it because uh, uh, to me it looks like it is denigratory how the name Emotan came about. Because, uh, because he could not, she could not bear children and because she cannot, she, could, uh, she couldn't cook, she doesn't cook, I mean she couldn't cook, the husband nicknamed her no so that is where a name that is how the word emotan came about beharini was uwaraye because they said she doesn't have children she cannot go they say a kemitan or so that because of after a long while, the name changed to a motor. Actually, the name was not actually a title. It was not even a, a praise name. It was not even a guy's name. It was a derogatory name. They became a, a name, and, and that name is a beautiful, beautiful name today. So that is how a motor uh, came into the scene. So when Prince Ogun... Uh, fled Chief Ogifa's uh, well. She ran into the heart of a mother because a mother is a very re loving person, respectable person. She recognized Ogun. Ogun is a very known person. So he now hid Ogun in the heart. 
But we soon got to the royal guards that uh, Prince Ogun was found in the vicinity of the market. So the guards came, they started ransacking the whole area, they searched from house to house. They even went into the house of uh, a motor to look for for uh, Prince Ogun. But uh, a motor uh, hid Prince Ogun, it was well hidden with all the words that she says. She he, he used things to cover Prince Ogun and they could not locate him. So that was how he escaped. So when from it was from uh, a motor, now she now, he now got all the news and all the information and how the kingdom has been struck with a lot of bad luck and how the brother has sent people to go and kill kill him. He became very very more furious and he snuck his way into the palace. And when he snuck his way into the palace. He found his brother and he murdered his brother. Wow. I'm telling you, read story. He story. History. So he killed his brother. And that is he killed the king now. The wife Yokunu was who was who usurped the, the, the throne, who took the throne from him so he killed his brother and when the a Dionysian heard that Prince Ogun had succeeded in entering the palace and killed the brother they were now afraid and they, they hurriedly rallied themselves around and discussed among themselves and now pledged to support him for the throne they now pledged to support him for the throne so and when they now brought him and they now crown him as king they crown him as king and he now took the title of oba eware he started his name now changed from prince ogun to oba eware so you see now he, 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 all the four children of oba ohen all of them became kings all of them became kings so that is how the story of Ebayo Ware, how he, he became king. Now, this is the beginning of the story. What I have just narrated is just part one of the story. This is where, from here, the story became very, very interesting. From here on, it became very, very interesting. Now, after becoming king, after becoming king, Oba Elware was true to his words. Because remember, when he, when he, uh, before he became king, he has gone through a lot of uh, crises, met a lot of people. He met Azua, he met the pregnant woman, he met the hunter, he met a motor, he met a doe. So the first thing he did when he became king, as uh, Oba Elware, he appointed a motor as Iyeki as the matron of the market that is the leader of the authorized ikbate guild there was a guild now he called ikbate they were tasked with the security matters in the market and enforcing market rules all the laws and order in the market now uh, emota became the iyeki of oba market of ekioba she became the ruler the head of all the market security and rules and regulations she became the Iyeki. So now, after uh, uh, um, after shortly after the the uh, enthronement of Oba Eware, Emota also died because she was already old. Emota Emota also died because the the, the death of Emota really pained. Uh, or by Elwari because he had hoped that she would live longer so that she will reap the benefits of all the things, the favor she did for for him. So because of that, the the only thing he could do uh, was that he he made the the king made a decree that uh, a mother should be buried in in her heart. That is opposite where her hut was, the, that her hut opposite the market, that a mother should be buried there. Later, the grave was marked, a, a, a tree was planted by the graveside 
called Uruhe tree. This Uruhe tree is a very strong tree, uh, and uh, and uh, they deify the king now deify a motor and and said that um, uh, every celebration, every procession in Bini City must pay homage to the burial site of a motor. That is why you see in Benin, during in Soton, back in the days, I don't know if they still do it, back in the days when there is, there is any in Soton in Benin, no matter where you are in Benin, people must dance and come to the front of a motor to end the in Soton procession. They will end it at the shrine of a motor, they will pay homage to a motor. That's because that was a decree made by Oba Elware the Great. It was a decree made by Elba Elware the Great to honor the honesty and the magnanimity of the king, of, of, uh, of the woman, a mother. So, the, 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 the tree that was planted at a mother's uh, grave, this is this, a uh, Uruhe tree, survived, the first tree survived for 300 years. The first tree was there for 300 years. And after 300 years, the tree fell. The tree fell during the reign of Oba Osemende. The tree fell during the reign of Oba Osemende. Oh, uh, and, that, uh, and that was around uh, 1800, 1816. Between 1816 and 1848 was when Oba Osemende was, a, was king. So after 300 years, the tree fell. And when the tree fell, Oba Osemende planted the same tree, another tree, a young tree, the same type of tree in the same grave, at the same spot, to honor this woman. So that replacement Uruhe tree survived for about 150 years. After about 150 years, they now plant another Iroko tree close to the tree so that they can uh, jam each other and support each other. Because of what happened before. So they planted after because the, the first tree, Uroe tree, lasted three hundred years. The second tree was planted and uh, and uh, after about one hundred and fifty years they, they planted an Iroko tree. So so the two trees now were now growing together and the two trees were there for about one hundred years together before they finally uh, uh, fell. So when the tree fell, it was in 1954. Now I'm, I'm, I'm coming to where this particular uh, statue, that statue you have right now at Oba Market, that immortal statue, that immortal statue was erected in 1954 by Oba Akenzo II. Oba Akenzoa II is the father of Oba Eware. I mean Oba Eredeawa. He's the grandfather of Oba Eware II. So Oba Akenzoa II in 1954, uh, in cooperation with the British colonial authorities, they commissioned that statue. Now, how one thing very important about that statue that that statue in Benin City was not even made in Nigeria. That statue was formed in Chelsea, London. That particular emotion statue was fashioned, was molded uh, uh, in Chelsea, in, in Chelsea, England. We you know those of you who are Chelsea fans. Up Chelsea, up Chelsea. So Chelsea fans, they, they, that, that particular place where you, that Chelsea football club is, is where the Emotan, uh, Emotan statue was cast. And when it was cast, it was actually cast in 1951. The, 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 there was a miniature, actually the, 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 there was a miniature model, a, a small Emotan model that they took from Benin to England. They took a, a, a small model of a motor made by one professional brass caster from Igun, Igun Elmo. 
that is the normal Igun Street now. There is a brown, a professional bronze caster from Iguemo. His name is called a Nomayo. A Nomayo made this bronze uh, prototype, a small type. So now this, the British now took this small prototype, they now took it to England and took it to Chelsea and it was now sculpted by a man called John A. Danford. John A. Danford was the sculptor that sculpted this present emota that we have today. So it, that was, it was sculpted in 1951 but it was officially commissioned when they brought it from England, they brought it to Benin, they erected it there, and it was commissioned in 1954. It was commissioned in 1954. That is the story of uh, uh, a motor. Beautiful history. It's not just a story like I told you, this is history. This is real history. Uh -huh. that, I, 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 although when you hear this story, there are a lot of meat attached to it, but I removed all the meat, all those meteorology attached to it, so that you hear the real, pure, authentic history. You hear, hear the, the, the authentic history. So, so that is how the, that statue became. I uh, came there. Now. Abai Ware, in continuation of the fulfillment promise of the promises that he made to reward those who help him to the throne, he installed Azua as the Ihama. Iha, or rather, you know, Azua was the guy, the, the Iha priest, Iha priest that, that divined for him at Iwindon that told him we meet three people. So when he eventually became king, he now called uh, Azua and made him. And gave him a title of Ihamame. And that title of Ihamame is what people call the Ihama of Benin today. And the Ihama of Benin, they are today still there. The family of Ihama are still at Igun Street today, Igwenwo, and they are professional bronze casters today. So, they, uh, in, in, uh, in the fulfillment of his promise, he made Azua the Ihama of Benin. Then Oba Elware also procured the corpse of Edo from Ogefa. He went to uh, Chief Ogefa. You remember that Edo was that uh, uh, slave boy that rescued him from the well. So that the soldiers killed. So when he became king, he now went and brought the corpse of Edo and brought that and assumed the, after assuming the body, he gave the servant a posthumous freedom. You know, as a, as a slave, there's a, the, the way they treat slave is, is different from the way they treat uh, freeborn. So, so they cannot bury slave the way they bury freeborn. It will honor Edo. The king now gave him a, a posthumous freedom. He pronounced him no longer a, a, a slave, but a freeborn. And he ordered him to be reburied under the altar of the Uhure region at the Aure Dun. The, that is uh, Uhure, Aure Dion at the uh, Aure Dun in the entrance of the palace to the inner, inner tower of the palace. So it is a, it's a very, it's a high place of honor. So that is where that slave boy was buried. And Oba now, the, the king now invited the whole people of Ubini to join him in honoring this slave boy who gave his life for him to live. He changed, that was the day he changed the name from Ubini, said from that day on, to honor the, de the, the, the dead slave, he changed the name of Ubini to Edo. Edo, he said, now he now said a word that because it was the love that was demonstrated by uh, Edo that saved his life. He now used the word, he said, Edo ne evo, evo ahiri. Evo ahiri actually means the city of love. The city of love. So that Benin kingdom should from now on become the kingdom of love. Edo evo ahiri. That is how we got the name of 
from Ubini to Edo, and it was changed by Oba Eware the Great. That was around 1300 AD. Around 1300 AD. So now, the further things that the king did before now, the king was uh, the, the, the 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 king. The, the, there is you see the way the king of Benin addressed today. All oh, the the traditional regalia, the crown, the bead crown, and the crown beads, or oh, the all oh, the uh, paraphernalia of of the Oba was introduced into the palace by Oba Eware the Great. Of this elegant ceremonial costumes of the kings and the chiefs that they, even like the way I'm dressed today, I'm dressed like a mini chief. So that is how that that is he it, all this were introduced by Oba Eware the Great. And so Oba Eware restored the annual cycle of royal ceremony. The most important ones was the Igwe, Ogera Iguera, in honor of the royal fathers that were gone before him. He's now decided that they, we must honor the royal fathers that were gone before him, all the kings that have come and gone before him. To honor them, he started to, to the, the Igwe, Eroba, Igwe Roba, and then, then uh, he now started the the propitiation of uh, of the head that this normal igwe that the Bini people do today because he felt that if his head was not good he would not have been able to escape and survive the ordeals and eventually become king so at the end of the year he now started celebrating igwe that is the the festival that the Ebdo people celebrate today to thank their star or their head or whatever uh, whatever they, they call it. So that Igwe, that is the genesis of the Igwe festival, which he started about three years into his reign. Now, with major spiritual event, he gained the throne. He, the, uh, the Igwe festival, is, um, he made it... Remember, I told you before that he, when he, they were, when they were, when he was running in the bush, he, he hid himself among certain leaves, and that leaf is a, a bear Today, that he now order that that airway that also saved him should be used as a symbol of peace during the Igwe festival. That is why you see today during the Igwe festival, youths now go to the bush, they pluck that airway leaf and to make airway, and airway in Benin means peace, peace, security, safety. That is what airway means. So he now, now since that leaf kept him uh, uh, safe, he now, now asks that every year during the Igwe festival, they must use that symbol of peace to greet everybody. So that is why you see on every day people begin to sing every day been every every day Maria every girl move out every every no Jojo every day been every so very soon uh, in the in the next uh, couple of months uh, by December there is another every festival coming Igwe festival coming this is the genesis of all this I'm telling you your story as an Edo person, as a Benin man. So uh, I, and I also decide to tell this story in English. Uh, it's not that I cannot say it in Edo. I decide to say it in English so that people that are non-Edos can also hear and listen because the, there are too many lies and misinformation going on, especially by non-Edos. We are the one telling our stories and we are the one that we that tell them what is right about our story so so the great festival uh symbolize the both sacredness of creation and the spirit entity in a man so if you look at the way it now divided the the igwe into into um uh, I think it, it, it's a festival that takes place for about two weeks. Now, if you look at the activities uh, of uh, the way the Edo Igwe is done, the first Igwe it comes, uh, Igwe Yoba, 
the Guiriyoba is the first Igwe day. After Igwe-Yoba, you, you have uh, Igwe-Do here. Uh, after igwe do here, the next day is uh, Ugiewe. That is Ewewe that we talked about just now. And uh, after Ugiewe, we have the what they call otwi Guoba, where it, all the chiefs pay homage to the Oba. And then uh, Igwoba. And uh, after the Igwoba, we have the Ugiemobo. So uh, this is how the Ewe uh, uh, festival came about. And there is a particular incantations they do during the Ewe uh, 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 celebration at the palace. And that incantations was developed by the Ihogbe family. So during that festival, Edo people say prayers, they cleanse themselves of their sins, they bring members of their extended family together to burn, to share gifts and blessings, feeding on, they, are not, they, they feed on the food and the atonement of the thanksgiving. They are the animal, they kill, they eat it the next day. It's just a, a period of merriment for, for Edo people. Traditionally, Edo people were never idol worshippers. Edo people were never idol worshippers. All these juju that people worship today, they were a later invention borrowed from different different places. That is why if you look, if you see all the juju that people are worshiping today, none of them even have a do name. Let me uh, Ifa Iha is Ifa is is, is, a, is a Yoruba name. Ogun is a Yoruba name. Or, 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 or whatever, they are all Yoruba name. Uh, Oloku, all Yoruba name. Shango, Yoruba name. Even the, to the uh, uh, Ashigidi, not Bini. Uh, Osukbika, not even Bini. Even the one they are even doing at the Ayelala, the present one that everybody is uh, putting for her at the Ayelala today, it's not even Bini. So, Bini's. We are never, ever at any time idol worshippers. They only, they only, they worship the true God, they worship their ancestors, and they worship their, their, their head. They worship their, the, the true God. That is why if you go to the Holy Arosa, if you see what they call Osagbaye, they, uh, they, that is what the, the Edos, traditional Edos worshipped. Then they, they, they worship their own ancestors that are gone by and they worship their, their, their head. They don't, the Edos never put one juju in one corner to do. So I don't know how this one came about. So well, that is not our topic today. So that is how the Ewere issue uh, uh, ended. So to, to quickly draw this thing to a close so that uh, I don't want to touch one very important uh, uh, area uh, you remember that when the, when when uh, became king he he started developmental stride in the kingdom he began he began to to encourage the, 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 the building of, you know, the way they built houses before. They built houses with palm trees and palm trees, uh, palm, I mean palm leaves, palm front, palm ribs, bamboo. It was when Obaewari became king, he now introduced the building of houses with mud. Strong mud houses. He introduced that into the kingdom and that is part mud. He replanted the city. He neatly laid out the roads so that the, the, this is, uh, if you go to the ring road now, the design, the design of the ring road with all those different junctions, it was done by uh, the Elwari the Great. The new palace that we have today, that, that is the palace, not the one built by the Obai Elwari the second now, the one that was Obai Elwari was, that the Mod Palace was rebuilt, redesigned and rebuilt by Oba Ewari. So that was how he, he began to design the city, began to 
to make sure that every place was in order, the population, it, it divided, no, the city were replanned neatly, and um, it divided the city into two distinct segments. We have a Oen uh, constituted the public sector, and the urban sector was called Ogbe. So we have Oen then we have uh, Ogbe. So uh, the population of the Oen was organized into wards, that is, uh, each, uh, uh, that is uh, Oen Okwa now, that is comprising of Igun, Owina, Oza, uh, Ogbelaka. He, 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 he now make sure that uh, uh, Ogbe Sasa, he now make sure that everywhere was segmented and each quarter was known for particular trade or art, or art, art history or artisanship. If you look at Iguna, they were known as bronze casters. Bronze, bronze casters. If you Owina, Iduwina uh, were uh, woodworkers, uh, carpentry. They were Iduwina. Every all carpentry, carving, we were Iduwina. Iduigun uh, were bronze. Iduosa were those ones that were doing uh, clothing, clothing from uh, from uh, uh, cutting. Oz, uh, you know what is called Oza. Uh -huh. that, that, that is the ones that they were doing those ones that he organized the city every city every quarter we are specialized in different different profession this is what our great king did more than 800 years ago more than 800 years ago why i'm saying this that so that we know that uh, what i'm saying our new king or uh, know about these things for him to take the name or by Ewai the second, he knows that he has a very big shoe to fill, and we believe that living by his name, the kingdom is going to experience the same greatness we experienced during the reign of the first of Ewai. During the reign of the first of Ewai, it was so great and uh, prosperous. We believe that the new king taking that same name. We, his reign will be great and prosperous as well. We are, and, and we pray that his reign will exceed that of Oba Eware, that at the end of his tenure, we will now name him Oba Eware the Greater. So that, we, that is what we, we pray for our king. So now, now, the the next thing Obai Wai did was the war machine. They, you know, he began to go into conquest. He began to he began to set up war machine that extended a donation, the, the notion of kingship, object of Aztec power across the west coast of Africa through dominant. He lent name to you know. You see, he, he so dominated that the, do you know that the Atlantic Ocean. Because from, from the Benin Kingdom, it dominated to the Atlantic Ocean. The, even the Atlantic Ocean, the high sea, today it is called the Bight of Benin. The Bight of Benin, because of the dominance of our great uh, uh, king. So, it, it was his reign, at the height of his reign, the Edo controlled a vast land in Yoruba land. A vast land, with uh, a, a, um, a vast uh, land... Uh, we controlled Yoruba land with population several times larger than Edo. You know, we, they, 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 they will conquer, they will go and conquer, and they will bring them to be subject to the king. So that is what they were, they were doing. They conquer many lands of the Yoruba. They exerted a considerable influence in eastern Yoruba land. They will maintain a trading connection with Ojo, with Owo, with Ekiti, Akure, Ondo, they were all Edo towns. They were all paying homage to the kingdom. They were all paying homage. Please, uh, uh, just hold on. Don't call me yet. I, I'll, I'll soon be through. After I'm through, then uh, you can, I will open the line for you to call. Just give me a second, please. Um, I will soon be, be through. Please, after I'm through, you can just call and state your opinion. So, now, the, the kingdom of Lagos was established by Benin Kingdom. Where uh, uh, they set up military camp for the occupation of, um, which is called uh, Eko, and uh, we extended our dominance from there to all the way to Benin Republic, to Togo, to Eastern Ghana, to Eastern Ghana. 
so our kingdom extended to the eastern Ghana from, from the west. Then the kingdom dominions uh, we cut through Igala in the north. In the northern part of Nigeria, from Gala, we, we rule up to Igala in the north and up to Kogi State, we rule all those places. So, and we exported our ideology of kingship to them all. If you see any kingdom, any, any kingdom, now any tribe, where you see they use beads, where you see they use Ada, where you see that they use Ebe, we were, they were once subject to the king of Benin. Those beads, these red beads, the Ada and the Ebe, they got all from Benin kingdom. They were all subject to, to, to the Benin kingdom. So any, anybody, any tribe, even in our own land, you see the whole Ada and Ebe, or Ebe, or this bead, know that they were once subject under the Benin kingdom. They were under Benin territory. Because that is what uh, our symbol as are there. Now, the port, under the reign of our king, of this great king, the Portuguese first made their first visit in West Africa. In 1472, during the Oba reign, the Portuguese, they came to West Africa. And they met with our king. And, and they, uh, they met with our king, and they, there was a very, there was, when they came, they were surprised to see that a city in the heart of Africa where they thought that Africans were living on top of trees. Yea, some were still living inside rock. Some Africans, as I said, were still living in rocks. Some were still living in bushes. Some were still savages. But Benin had a well-established monarch. I mean, a well-established monarchy. We have a well-established monarchy as sat then. Even as at this time, we were already in the second dynasty of our kingship because the 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 Ogisu, uh, the Oba dynasty started from uh, uh, Oromia which extended now to Obaiware I think Obaiware was about the 13th Oba Obaiware was about the 13th Oba but before this 13th Oba we had already had about 31 kings known as Ogiso among these 31 Ogisos two were women two great women ruled as Ogiso in Igodo Migodo. So, so, so to tell, the Portuguese, were, they were surprised that a great civilization was in, was in the heart of Africa. They were very surprised. So they, they extended a, their hand of fellowship and there was a very great uh, uh, trade that went, I mean, a trade that went between us. There was a cordial train relationship they, because we were... Um, they, they respected us. They respected us. And do you know that between Oba Ewa, uh, when the Portuguese, remember the Portuguese came to Benin Kingdom in 17, in 1472. 1472. And between 17, for, uh, 17, 1472 and 1897, look, look at the gap. The, we have already we were already trading with white people between 1472 and 1897. About more than 300 years, there was a, a, a cordial relationship between the Edo nation and the and the and the European nation before the British came. The British came in the 1800. And when they came, they came with their jaga jaga, they came with their tricks, and they didn't behave the way the Portuguese behaved. They, were start, they started annexing everywhere. They deceived King Dosumu of Lagos in 1806, and they took over Lagos. Even after taking over Lagos in 1806, it still took them almost 100 years before they were able to conquer our kingdom. We are a great people. So that is uh, uh, how the, the Portuguese issue came about. There, there's one other person I want to mention before I withdraw. I open the line for, for telephone calls. And that person is called um, Iken. Because Iken also ruled during the time of, uh, of Oba Ewai. Iken also ruled that time. So Iken was a great warrior. 
Actually, they were two great warriors. One was called Ezuku. That Ezuku actually was not a Bini man. He was an Igbo man that came to, to dwell in Bini Kido. He was a great warrior. He was a, great, a, a, was a, a military general. And this military general... He was the one that Bini Kingdom used to fight the wars in the in the uh, in the eastern flank. In the eastern flank, then Iken was the one that was fighting the war in the in the western flank. Iken was the one that 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 go to Akure or war to go and fight. So, eh, 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 Ezuku, because of the the the, the bravado of Ezuku, he was honored. He was honored. So the, the you know as a, as a as a foreign as a foreigner so the the, the, the monarch he cannot contest for the throne remember that as at this time as at this time the the monarchy was not primogenitor like i told you before it, it was not primogenitor and as i explained primogenitor system is when the first son of the king becomes the king but this, before, remember that I told you when King Gohen died, his four children now, King Elbaiwari, the, uh, the first, is the fourth son of King Gohen to rule in Bini Kingdom now. He's the first son, first son of King Elbaiwari uh, to rule in the kingdom. So it was not a primogenitor issue. But it was Elbaiwari that tried to institute a, a primogenitor issue system of government because of what he suffered from his brothers so he tried to institute a primo genitor uh, issue though so we'll, we'll come to that so what, what i'm trying to say that ezuku was very a successful uh, warrior and uh, and uh, the the they honored him and give him uh, um the they give him a, a in the outskirts of the kingdom, they they give him, uh, they respected him and give him a place in the outskirts of the kingdom around the Boba Hill area. So, but in the case of Iken, Iken was a great warrior and he was the son of the soil. He was in the Uselu area, and because he was in the Uselu area, and he was uh, very strong. He was a, a great warrior and he had a lot of spiritual power, and his uh, his powers were always. You know, in, in, in Bini Kingdom, those days, warriors, they put their charms as, uh, as uh, 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 ornaments, like ornaments, accessories, after dressing, they will wear it, they will tie some in the body, at Balu Day, they will put some in, in, the, in the waist and all that. That is what they, they, they do back then. So, but... Uh, Iken was so respected because of his great prowess. And because of the great prowess, the chiefs were afraid of Iken. They were very much afraid of Iken because they, uh, they, they felt that as at now, as at now the, the, uh, the king had just two sons. And it's not compulsory that then the son sons may may become king they were afraid that because uh, Iken was becoming too powerful he may usurp because they, they were always afraid of, of a powerful king that is the same way they were afraid of uh, Ogun before he became king so they now started being afraid of Iken and they begin to plot the the downfall of Iken they, they would discover that number one a great warrior like Iken was supposed to uh, maybe uh, the king was supposed to give him a, a one of his daughters to marry as a wife but the king did not do that and they they probably the chiefs did not even say good well of he came to the king so when he, he can notice that he was despised in the palace he can now refuse to go to the palace at a time he now refused to go to war they now asked him to come to the palace he will now refuse so then Oba now there was problem in in um, Akure and Ekiti. Akure and Ekiti refused to send their you know every, every year they supposed to send um, their, they pay homage 
they, they, they pay homage to the king, to the kingdom. They, so they, they refused to send, probably because, they, because he came who was their terror, who was terrorizing them, was no longer fighting for the kingdom. They felt that they, they were not having problem anymore. They refused to pay their homage to the king. So the king now sent for Iken. After much persuasion, Iken, uh, God bless you, what uh, Linda Cassidy, the, the, the word I was actually looking for is tribute. They refused to pay tribute to the king. So uh, then the, the, the king now sent for Iken. Iken, after much persuasion, Iken went to the king. The king now begged him to go to meet this. Uh, king of Ekiti and Akure, if they refuse to pay the tribute, they need he need their head. So when the king of uh, Ekiti heard that Iken has been mobilized, he quickly withdraw the threat and return being loyal to the king and, and send his tribute. But the king of Akure refused to send his tribute. So Iken now went to to Akure to fight war. While Iken was away, the 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 the, the Elbae Ware now sent his son because they, they had two sons now. Uh, the the Elbae Ware sent one of his sons to go to Iken's palace. No yadaji Iken until Iken goes and come back. That was called uh, that that title. That is how the title of a Daiken came about. That no yard die in Iken to go and hold the house of Iken until Iken goes to the war and come back. So Iken now went to war. And when Iken got to war, got to Akure, he fought the war because the war was known. The Akure people, they also they used jazz. Iken used jazz. The war was very brutal. And it, uh, the legend had it that the palace chiefs, they were doing a lot of charms so that Iken will die in war. But unfortunately for them, Iken succeeded and conquered the king of, uh, of Akure and cut off his head and sent the head through emissaries to the palace. To the palace. But, but something happened. Something happened. The daughter of the king of Akure now seduced Iken. Being a very beautiful girl, seduced Iken and wanted uh, and, uh, and and submitted herself as a uh, as a war booty for Iken. And Iken, remember that Iken too didn't have any children. Iken was looking as okay, probably this one will give him a uh, 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 seed offspring. And Iken now fell for this uh, young girl, and Iken now pulled. All his war regalia, all the Akbalu day and everything that he used to wage himself, he pulled it off and he wanted to have an affair with this beautiful damsel. And from there, the damsel uh, beckoned on, on some of the warriors that were hiding and they pounced on Iken and they killed Iken. That is how Iken lost his life. We, that is how Iken lost his uh, life. So, yeah, so now, the, the, Obaewai now has two sons. One of them is called, um, I think, uh, the name of the son is uh, Koboyuwa. Koboyuwa, the name of the first son of Oba Ewai, was called Koboyuwa. And the second son was called Ezuwara. And these two children, because of the problem that Owaifi uh, Okun uh, and Ogun had, uh, 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 the Oba didn't want two of them to have issues about who is going to reign. So he now told the first son, he now uh, uh, told the... Uh, I mean, he, he, he now told the first one, which was a daike. He now took, uh, I mean, uh, uh, Koboyuwa now. He now took Koboyuwa to go to Selu to become the daike of Selu. And he now 
told uh, the uh, Ezuwara, the second son, and he make him the Nogi of Iyowa. Iyowa is is a uh, is very close to Oluku. Today Oluku, Iyowa is very close to uh, Oluku today. So he made the second son the Nogi of Oluku, so that to separate the two children, so that they will have kingdoms they are reigning over, so that their eye will not be on the throne. But the second son was not happy with the the way the father went about the matter because he, he probably the spirit of wife uh, Okun was also in him. So he was not happy about mm, that he was not allowed to aspire to rule after maybe or probably the way the father if he's already uh, uh, in Iyowa, even if his brother dies as king now he will no longer be able to come and become king. So he was not happy. So this thing caused quarrel between him and his brother and they fought and that thing resulted in the death of the two of them. Two of them died and Oba Elware lost his own uh, uh, children who were supposed to uh, 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 enter the throne. So after the death of these two children, Obaiwari married another young lady called Omuwa. Omuwa was from Udo. We know where Udo is today. Udo where Arwan was. Udo at Ovia local government area after Igwobazowa, after Okada. I mean, is it before Okada? Sorry. Uh, before Okada, but he left towards, uh, I mean, Udo, the popular Udo. Then the leader, the king of Udo today, or he's not a king now, we, they call him the, the leader or the Enoge. They call it the ERC of Udo. So, Omuwa was from Udo, and Omuwa gave uh, Oba Elware two sons. Uh, the name of the two sons, the first one was Ezoti, the second one was Okpame. And uh, the Obai wife had another son from another woman, actually. So, so they, they had three, three sons. Three sons, actually. I think that, that, that one was uh, Olua. Olua. So, but it was, the, it was not born by the mom, by Omowa. Omowa had a Zoti and Okpame. But another woman gave birth to Olua. But I think Olua was older than Okpame. Ezoti was older than Olua. Olua was like a bridge between Okbame and Ezoti, but from another woman. So now, because uh, Obaiwai was now becoming old, he now asked the, the diviners to check for him which of his sons, because what he has done was so great in the kingdom, and he needed a son who would continue his legacy. He needed a son who would continue his legacy. Actually, so he now wanted a divination to, to see who of his children will, will, um, will succeed him so that he will start a, a so that he will start a primogenitor uh, issue. Because he wanted uh, probably Olu uh, Ezoti to rule after him, maybe after Ezoti, the son of Ezoti, after the son of Ezoti, the son of the son of Ezoti, like that, like that. He wanted that system. But when the when the divination came, the they they they, they were not too good. They were not too good. From uh, they said um, they describe Ezoti as a, the divination describes the other son as a very stingy and likely to plunge the kingdom into prolonged hunger if he became Oba. That was the result of the divination that Ezoti is stingy and he will not become a, he will not be a good Oba. And they, now remember that the same the same Edionise that have been that have been problem to the to the kingdom are the same people now that is bringing all this divination. They said Olua is the second in line. They, they describe him as a, they said is a, a, 
is 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 a is a squanderer, is a prodigal uh, person. That uh, if uh, if he becomes Oba, he will squander the wealth of the uh, that the uh, the king has gathered over the centuries, and uh, he will squander, squander them. And and it's not the way he lives is not good to the public. So they called, they now gave him a nickname, called him Okbetu Borozo. That is Olua. They call Olua Okbetu. So now. They now said the, the, for the Okpame, who is the third son, that they believe that, uh, the, he come, uh, that the guy like war, that the uh, Okpame like war, is like to fight, is uh, that he will he have passion for war, for blood, and uh, uh, the, that uh, uh, sword gives him happiness. So it's like the whole thing, divination didn't favor the king. So uh, the Oba was very perplexed that none of his sons would make a good Oba. He decided to stop bothering with the uh, innovations and and return the kingdom to equality of sibling process, which would guarantee maybe the three sons will rule in turn after him. Actually, I think uh, after Oba Eware when he died in uh, I think fourteen, he died in fourteen seventy three when he died, Ezoti became the king. Ezoti did not even rule for is it 14 days or 14 years? I don't want I don't want to speculate, but Ezoti reign was very very brief. They killed him. They already told the king that they don't want him. So my people, that is that for the story of today. And I know some of you will have observation, contribution, questions. Please, the line is open now. You can call in. For your observation, for your question, for anything that you feel like uh, letting us know concerning this debate. Please, don't just sign out. Uh, still remain online and let, let's listen to what others' contributions are. And please make sure you share this even after watching, after we are through. Make sure you share it on your wall. Share it on, to your friends. Let a lot of people, let everybody uh, 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 see it. Because it is very, very... Uh, 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 necessary. Okay, bro, uh, Mr. Clement said that uh, Ezoti ruled for 14 days. I think you. I think that is very correct because I know he had a very, very, very brief rule. He had a very, very brief rule. So, please share, 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 share. Just share. Please call in. Let us hear your contribution. Um, those of you that are just joining us, I am. Uh, Please, you have to, when the video is over, I don't want to recap. When the video is over, pl please go to the beginning and make sure you start the story from the beginning so that you can get a full uh, impact. And, and um, I, I'm going to give you another story about Ikala Dera, Oduduwa, and Benin Kingdom and the Yoruba Ife connection, what connects Bini and Yoruba and Ife, the thing that connects us together, how, who came from who. So we are going to, we are going to, we are going to also discuss that one because that one is very, very important for us. That is the beginning of the Oba dynasty. We are going to go into that some of these days, but uh, we, but let us dissect this one let us enjoy this one let us this one remain in our memory because as Benins, we should know our history we should know our story let not this fake historians telling us our story no this is who we are we are sons and daughters of great and great kings oba elware was the greatest king that has ever ruled Benin kingdom and it is our prayer that the present king who took Eware the second will equally be as great, if not even greater. So, my people, if there's nobody calling, let me give you some Bini music. Sweet, sweet. 
Makuyo. Thank you very much, Helen. Thank you, thank you. Vicky Omo, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us. Linda Cassidy, thank you. God bless you. Please make sure that you guys share. Please share, 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 share. Thank you, Osas. Thanks. I Osas. Victor Ero, thank you very much, my brother. Thank you, Kevin Binovia. Share, like, and share, like, and share. Thank you very much. God bless you, Angel David. God bless you too. Please just share before you sign up. Please share. Irene Ogbewi, long time. How are you? Thank you. Oh, you both say this word too small. Now let me know. Sorry, I never mind. God bless you, Iroyo. Rosalie, thank you. Mercy, thank you. Kemi Sunday, thank you very much. Sonny, thank you, Sarabo. Efo Samson Asemota. Thank you. Now somebody is calling from the UK. Let's listen. Hello. Hello. Hello, my sister. Hello. Hello, my sister. Are you hearing me? Hello. Hello. We are hearing you. Koyo. Hello, Padomo. Yeah, tell me, Koyo. Hello. Okay. Sorry, we were hearing you, but it's like you were not hearing us. Sorry about that. Good evening, sir. Vicky Omo Flexi. Peter Omo Flexi. Osas Woodbridge, thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Okay, let's see. Hello, Kola. My sister Koyo. Hello. Hello, where are Hello. Okay, the sister is not hearing us. Don't know what is the problem. We don't know what the problem is. Sister, we don't know why you are not, you are not hearing us, but we are hearing you perfectly well. I'm proud of you. Ekoswe Vito too. I'm proud of you too. Thank you. Thank you, Austin Haniri. Thank you very much. And White, good morning, good morning, my sister. God bless you for joining us. Okay, thank you very much, Osama Pran. Good evening, Idia Queen, Prince Eweka Moregi. Thank you very much. Hello. Hello. Hello, Sadomo. My sister, Koya Buta. Koya. If I ask you what about where we go? What's where my sister and madam yo? Apa we ma le dore o yara uwe o. Yara uwe o. Apa we ma le dore yara uwe o. Apa we ma le dore o yara uwe o. Apa la top me. He said. He said. Oh, what the bow is far? He said, "Can we wear cool yo?" What you want to wear? Oh, what you wear? What can you wear? Mo e igera ne igize ne ima ima gamio kamo pa. Ima gamio kamo what can you wear? Ibejo. 
Is that jacket you? I'm always saying, my gum, you can. God bless you. Thank you. No, not that. Okay. Hello. Hello, caller. Hello, caller. Hello. Hello, caller. Hello. Okay. Oh. Call the jam call, call the jam call. Good morning, Franco Paul. Gospel Mike. Good thank you very much. <laughs> Lolo. <laughs> Lolo Monica. <laughs> That's your name. It's good, man. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Too many calls coming at the same time. Don't know why. Hello. Okay. Hello. 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 Good evening. Please turn down the volume of your device. Okay. Can you? Can you hear me now? We are hearing you. Good evening. God bless you. Good evening. My name is Linda Cassidy. Linda Cassidy, thank you very much for calling. Where are you calling You're from? You're welcome, sir. I'm calling you from Germany. Okay. What's your comment yeah. for us? I came late to the program. Yeah. Uh, I was able to grab um, a little. Okay. I am a historian. Okay. I, I graduated from the University of Benin. Wow, very nice. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I must tell you, I was impressed. Thank you with very all, yeah, with everything you said. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm honored to be to be impressed by a professional historian. Wow. <laughs> uh, I was actually taught by Professor Ibafe. Wow. I professor. was taught Bini history Be by Professor Ibafe. Good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Please, I want to know when next you're going to have your program so I can tune in. Yeah. Hopefully, uh, normally we don't really... I've not actually... I, um created time for my program yet because i'm just testing the waters to make sure i know how things will fall but hopefully in the near future i will know the particular date i'll be doing it okay uh, but I, I, okay. I, I, I assure you people will share it and you will you will see you will see it right. when i'm online no yeah thank, thank you so much for this great information in passing Thank you very much. That's the grace of you. I'm honored. I'm you. honored. Thank you, my sister. <laughs> You're welcome, sir. God bless you. Have a beautiful evening. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, yeah, bye. Yeah, bye. Okay. I should always come online on Friday. Yeah, I, 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 I believe so. Every Friday I'll be online, but I want to add another day to it. God bless you, Peter. I you saying. Thank you. Hello. Please, can you turn down the volume of your device? Hello? 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 Hello, caller? Hello? 
Hello, my brother. Good evening. Uh, what are you here now? Oh, yes, you're telling me. I'm going to go to the house. 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 What are you doing? Mm-hmm. Time, man. Who knows, man? What are you doing? Okay. A program, who knows? Mm-hmm. Eh, I'm a serious guy. I'm a mole. Eh. I'm a guy. Eh. The program, I No way down your now, we have now. The Maube Babana. The man did the understand <laughs> Right, uh, I'll tell you, 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 i I don't cut her, my sister. I don't cut her. I don't understand the cat call out. <laughs> the call don't go. If they don't let the tap person call, now they, they stop license. He said, I follow, I they call from, and the and number they show Belgium. Hello, good evening. Good evening, my sister. God bless you. Bota, 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 teme koyo. Bota, one ne wa le do ko, you know. Agbe ya go go. Egbe wa wo, me 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 Egbe ma wo me o Hello banola no fejo Eh you say o ko yo Eh e wa go go wetin e ka bo Wetin my sister Wetin the matter o e Ni me wa do un e ka bo na lo we do hi wa o no Very good E yo pa ni o ni bi no e pa O e e o mo o ba e va ya wo re e de ma e so pa re u se o pa re wa e re no if you send uh uh you or I do we ma wa we ita because eh ohani ohano kwa wa we ino. No, I want me to ohani because ohani. The side you need, you make it. You say here, the man is sorry at all. Okay, ma ma. Come here, take me here. I love it real so. Eh 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 eh. Eh eh. When I na tu e love at twenty, o we o twenty dono. O twenty dono. Because they like. Like I only have a the lie, the lie, and if you had the lie, the lie, I will send my angie in a very no boom. Oh, in a very no boom. 
he has uh we have we no do genia who do take a not go eh take a cannot go or bass one but who don't in a year can I eat say I give him ever a oba he your seni or you be or you be or you be or you be a total bar or a guy or a doni or you be ye so you are sick, 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 Okay, it's a thing on that time. Eh, you know. Eh, my, 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 Oh my God bless. Okay, Clement. Who can it? He said, "Who said it's your village?" Okay. Hope you can speak the language, David. Thank you very much, Angel David. I hear you. Okay. Uh, hello. 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 Can you sh please can you load down the volume of your device? Yeah. Okay. Good morning, Bota. Good evening. Yes, I am Bota. Bota, Okoyo. Bota. 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 Hello, you know, you know, break. What are you? You go to Hello. 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 If a line, a line, where you start break, you shall go. I'm on my way. Uh, try, try that. We call. Let's see. God bless you, caller. Yes, hello. Utesi Henry, you are from Utesi. Good, that's nice. Hello, good evening. Yeah, pardon, Mosa. In your time, I call you Abuta. Eh, me na uta 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 ni e noma e noma. E noma, o te me o ye Abuta, call you. Damo, damo sa, damo sa. Call you, we di ba matana. Mm. <laughs> 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 If I was to say, I want to get you to get my data. Oh, see, my brother. God bless you. Oh, yeah. Oh, see. Yes, hello. Yes, hello. Hello. Hello, caller from California. Hello. Hello. Uh, tell me about uh, our last car. See, a volume made device where we're turning. I'm making that one with you. Uh, tell me about your buta. Man, let's talk to one another. Mm. The matter 
Veniani, ma vedi, 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 ma eh, io voglio dire che non è un problema. Eh, oh, 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 what you have for what you say? Yeah, I'll tell you about Odudua in the coming weeks. That is, uh, I'm talking to Peter James. Yeah, I'll tell you about Odudua, Izodua, Ikaladera, and uh, the Ogiamie. Because they, they were all connected. The Ogiamie, Izodua, Odudua, Ikaladera, and the, the story is interwoven. I uh, will discuss that on a very good day. Thank you, my sister. James, thank you. So, my great people, I'm going to sign out at the end of this music. So, I thank you all for joining. Uh, please, before you sign out, please make sure you share, you share, you share, you share. Share in your world. May God bless you. May God keep you strong. May God keep you healthy. Before we see next time, may you keep living well. May all the plans of your enemy never materialize in the name of Jesus. Thank you, everybody. God bless you. I'm happy to I'm happy to have you all. May God bless you. I see you next time. Bye. Bye-bye.